Wow, this is a really big WWDC for hardware. Apple have announced so many different computing hardware and I'll be going over each one of them. I'll share with you the configuration I am ordering in the studio to do testing. And if you are a photographer who does light video work, you want to go and order one now, this will be a configuration guide as well so that you can make the best decision possible. And I'll also be talking a little bit about the Vision Pro headset as well, which I am looking forward to when it launched. Anyway, let's find out together. This is Art is Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. I appreciate that Apple have launched all their computing hardware at the very beginning of the WWDC 23 virtual keynote. For the remainder of time, we can just focus on the software and services launching later this fall. And Apple have also did the big one more thing and announced their new Apple Vision Pro, which is a headset. And this is something that I am also excited about from a photographer perspective, but I also want one of these to use personally as well. Because Apple, I mean, so far what I have seen in the keynote, you can use this for content consumption, web browsing, but more so you can use this with just your hand gesture without having to use the extra remote on the side. I think that's gonna be great. And another thing that's really awesome is that I really want to use this to watch TV shows and movies in bed and get a super large screen. That is really what I want. So. But beyond this, they have also talking about using this Apple Vision Pro to do productive workflow as well. And you can use this in conjunction with your MacBook Pro. So what I wanna know is for instance, if I use this with my MacBook Pro, have a 4K screen protected, how would this be using this long-term? Will my eyes get fatigued? Is this something that I can't wear long-term? How is it going to feel? And for instance, from a creative photographer, if I want to do image culling, color grading in Lightroom or color correction in Lightroom and also retouching in Photoshop, how is that experience going to be using the virtual headset versus using an external display or the display built into my laptop? And I think many of you will want to know about these two. So these are going to be, I think, interesting things that we're going to look at. The other thing that I will also say about this too is that these devices coming from other companies are a concatenated experience at best that having Apple vertical integration and seeing the improvement that they have done with their Apple Silicon and knowing that they're putting those technology in the inside is definitely something that I'm looking forward to. So early next year, I'll be getting one in studio and I'll give you my thoughts on this, but Apple will probably make another announcement when this becomes live again. So we'll be talking about it then too. All right, now let's talk about the hardware announcement. There's a few of them that they have announced or quite a bit actually, and this is a big day. So let's start out with the MacBook Air. They have announced a 15 inch model and it's still the M2 on the inside. My guess right now is that this M2 and the 13 and the 15 inch will perform really close to each other, if not the same. The 13 inch one was launched last year. And when that launched, I got so many different models to run testing in the studio. This time around, because like I said, my speculation is the performance will be close to each other. I only order one configuration and that's similar to the one that I ordered last year to use for myself. And it is pretty much just the configuration that Apple have already with 512 gigabytes of memory and 24 gigabytes of memory upgrade. And that's pretty much it. So I'll be running a comparison between this and also the 13 inch one to see if there's any variation. If they are, and there are within the margin of error, this just means that they are performing really close to each other. So something to remember is that these two machines are still passive cooling with no fans on the inside. And even though the 15 inch chassis is a little bit bigger, I think that the thermal dissipation because it's still in a fairly thin chassis are going to be very similar. So we're gonna see how they perform. And if there's that much variation where this is running that much faster, I might get a few extra configuration in later on to run some testing. But so far what I think right now, this is going to be the same. And I will also caution you as well, if you are a full-time pro and this is going to be your main machine, Definitely go for the 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pro or choose a desktop one instead with the Pro Max or Ultra SoC because just the regular M2, I mean, I have so many clients that I consult for and they have purchased the just the regular M1 or the M2 ship. And when they really put a lot of heavy workflow or heavy workload through, it does really drag on where it's not quite as fast as the other variants that has more power. So those are just one of the things to think about. All right. The next machine that we're gonna talk about is the Mac Studio. And we have been wondering for a long time if Apple is going to upgrade the Mac Studio cycle or not. Are we getting the M2 on inside? And yes, we are. So we are getting the M2 Max and the M2 Ultra. The configuration for the Max, very similar to what we have seen in the laptop cycle. And we already seen how the machine performed 
on the laptop counterparts already when they released that earlier this year. I really feel that these machines in general, based on my testing in the past, for example, the M1 generation, the performance are going to be just about the same. And for this, I'm ordering two configurations into the studio. Those are gonna be just as Apple have them right now. So one, the M2 Max, just the base configuration, and the M2 Ultra, just the base configuration into the studio to run the test. Now, there are a few things to note, and I wanna share that with you. For example, if you started out with, for instance, just a base M2 Max, you cannot upgrade to 96 gigabytes of memory, you're maxed out at 64. So in order for you to access a 96 gigabytes of memory, very similar to the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro, you have to upgrade to the top M2 Max chip first. That's the one with the 38 GPU core. With that, now you have access to 96 gigabytes of memory. But if you take a look at the price point right now, seeing where it is, I mean, if you really need this, I, I guess it's fine and you get 96 gigabytes of memory. But otherwise, if you really add a little bit more money into it. We're not really quite a strong throw to, for instance, the M1 Ultra, but it's not that much more to really consider getting an Ultra ship at this point if you're upgrading it this much on your system. But you know, each one workflow is different, but I want to share this with you. Most of the time as photographers, I will highly say that most of you will not need anything more than 64 gigabytes of memory, and 64 is definitely a good number, and 32 is a good minimum for you to go with. So I'll say that. Now, as far as upgrading the Mac SoC, from the base one to the top one that has the difference between 30 versus 38 GPU core, is that $200 worth it? Based on what I have shown in my testing of the 16 inch MacBook Pro, there's not that much of a variation. I mean, the variations are really small that I don't really think justify the extra 200, but if you want to get like a more powerful machine from the get-go, I mean, certainly you can. But let me also caution you as well that if you're using, for example, Capture One and you're hoping to get more performance going from 30 to 38, forget about it. You're not gonna get that at all. Very similar to the Ultra as well. Going from 60 to the 76 core GPU, it's not gonna give you any bump whatsoever. So those are something to keep in mind. All right, let's quickly talk about the max configuration. So if you go through a max similar to the previous M1 generation model, if you just go with a max configuration, those are just USB type C. When you go to the ultra, those get bumped up to a Thunderbolt 4. So something to think about there if you want to know about those. And I believe these are on independent bus as well. All right. So with this in mind, once you choose the M2 Ultra, regardless of configuration, you can bump it as much as 192 gigabytes of memory, which I think this is like overkill. Let's really just talk about this for a second. I, I rarely admit this, but there are times when things become overkill and 192 gigabytes of memory for photography workflow is definitely overkill. Because even me, I can't even push it much beyond like 64 gigabyte. Now, another machine that I end up ordering this time around because I have ordered just the base spec M1 Ultra and I'm finding out that I'm constantly running out of memory. So for a machine that I'm going to use in the studio, I also ordered the 128 gigabyte memory one as well. This already costs close to five grand, but this is one I'm gonna be using with a one terabyte SSD storage. Also notice as well is that when you go to the Ultra, the 512 gigabyte SSD option is pretty much grayed out. You can't configure it that way. So yeah, I think that if you are a photographer, I wouldn't even consider going to the top, for instance, M2 Ultra, because those are just GPU core gains and you're not gonna get benefit from that. And rarely do you have an app right now that can really go in and leverage all those GPU gain at this point, especially for a photography app. And some video app, you may get that, but most of the time, you're not really gonna get that. And I would just say that even there may be some performance gain, for example, in Lightroom Classic or Lightroom Cloud version, those gains, gaining, for instance, these extra 16 GPU cores, it's definitely not worth the extra $1,000. So I highly advise against that and use the money to upgrade other components instead if you really want to spend that money. All right, now with that said, we're gonna do one big comparison and this is the Mac Mini M2 Pro versus a customized Mac Studio or the Mac Studio with the M2 Max generation now. So I think this is gonna be a compelling one. So let's say I've gone in and run the scenario similar to what I've done earlier this year. I upgrade the M2 Pro to the top SOC. I upgraded 32 gigabytes of memory and have the storage of 512, which is now equivalent between these two machines. And I'm also going to put in a 10 gigabit ethernet. With this in mind, comparing this to the Mac Studio with pretty much everything that's already configured that also has 10 gigabit ethernet as well and extra ports on the machine, 
beyond just, for example, the Mac Mini. We're looking at a price point where the Mac Studio is now the better value because it's $99 cheaper. Now, here's the thing. If you don't feel that you need the top M2 Pro, and I really genuinely don't think that spending the extra $300 is going to bump up the performance by much, I would probably go with the base M2 Pro. And if you don't need, for example, the 10 gigabit ethernet, it does bring the price down where the Mac mini M2 Pro is still a better value proposition. But like I said, the moment you start to add things in, and especially if you start to upgrade the SoC, the value proposition start to tilt in the way of the Mac Studio very quickly as you're seeing right now. So those are just some of the variable points to consider in your workflow. And the last machine that I have been waiting for for a very long time, and I was super shocked to see the price point of is the Mac Pro. It comes in two configuration, a tower and a rack mount one. And with this, the price have also gone up by about $1,000. So now it's sitting at $6,999 and it has the M1 Ultra ship on the inside. Don't get me wrong. I love the M1 Ultra ship, but I might just stick with my Mac Studio. So I've ordered one of these to run a testing in the studio to see if this is gonna fit in my workflow or not. And if you haven't seen a video that I made last year, I got an eGPU with Thunderbolt 3 and I put in my Sonnet NVMe card inside that eGPU and plug that into my Mac Studio uh, to get extra storage on the machine. So I rate all those NVMe together, two terabyte ones, there are four of them. So I get eight terabyte of really fast storage. Obviously going through Thunderbolt 4 connection, there are overheads and everything. Plugging that card, that Sonnet card directly into this Mac Pro is definitely gonna be faster, but I don't know if it's actually $7,000 faster you know, worth it or not. So that's my thing. We'll see where this goes, but I'd be curious to see how this performs. And especially I want to know how this Mac Pro is going to perform against, for example, a Mac Studio. Is the performance between these two SOC going to be the same? Because what we're seeing right now are the cores, but we don't see the frequency tuning. If Apple have actually bumped up the frequencies on, for example, the GPU core, the GPU core or not. So these are things I want to know. But let's say if I've gone and configured this to, for example, like 128 gigabytes of memory, looking at close to $8,000. So this really does give me pause, but I really do want this machine. So We'll see where this goes. Beyond this, you only have the option to choose between these two configuration, the memory and also storage on the machine. And that is about it. The rest, well, you can choose between standard feet or the wheels. You can choose between different input device, but that's pretty much. Now on the inside of this, a few things that I found that are really neat is the fact that you can go in and also put in hard drive like you have done in the past generations of Mac Pro from 2019 because there are still those SATA overheads there that are at the very top so you can still mount and I think put in like SATA drive there. There are a lot of PCIe expansion slots. I would say that the Mac Pro is a much more suited machine for pro video workflow that needs a lot of extra cards built into the machine or any type of sound engineer or musicians that have a lot of extra add-on cards that are crucial to run it internal to the machine. As far as photography workflow goes, let's just be honest. This is really overkill for photography and I really don't think that anyone would really need that considering how good the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra in just the base one is. So that's my thoughts about this so far, but I got one of these coming in as well. And yes, it does cost a lot of money, but I want to see how it performs. So I'll be sharing you my thoughts as these come out. So a few things to note that all these machines are supposed to be arriving next Tuesday. You're viewing this right now, so they'll be coming next Tuesday. I have a few engagement that I have to do um, out of town. So my review may be coming a little bit later, just so you know if you follow the channel, but it is coming. So just stay tuned to the channel for that. If you have any questions or comments or anything you want me to test specifically, leave them in the comment section below. If I have time, I'll do them. Give it a like, subscribe and hit my bell renew and in Art We Trust. Thank you.